brings us to, I think this is our, our last question. I decided to uh, include uh, Kristen, but uh, not to include Eduardo. When I, when I looked at uh, Eduardo's response on um, whatever the Portuguese, uh, Brazil, Terebus, um publication, trade paperback, whatever it is, is going to be, uh, there's, there's just too many questions with, with no short answers. Um, at, so, at Eduardo, one of the reasons, I will be getting back to you, but I'll be getting back to you in, in text form by Relay Facts. That's when I, when I was going to send, I was going to send that up and Kristen's up, and I'm, I'm like, I was going to do it. I think I got had him, and I was going to do it on Monday, and, I'm like, and I just got busy. And then it was uh, getting the facts ready. I'm going, well, there's these two, but at the same time, I probably shouldn't. And I'm like, that's why I'm like, nope. I'll just I'll throw them on as a hey, if you really want to, we can, and if you don't want to, I totally understand. Right. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So let me shift through my uh, old faxes. Uh, hey, Matt. It's uh, Chris. I, I'm. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Kristen. Uh, Hunwardson, uh, towards the bottom of today's Amok blog, there was a Cerebus sketch cover drawing done by Dave and a letter faxed, uploaded, asking if he'd be interested in doing that particular sketch for a commission. Uh, he had blacked out all my information, uh, name, address, uh, which I appreciate. But that was, in fact, me. And seeing as he did that colored sketch and added my name, Kristen, uh, on the bottom left of the cover, I take it that he is, in fact, interested. Uh, sweet. I'd love to own it. Uh, I still have my money that I was intending on pledging on our service number four art auction on Heritage. Um, and thank you for, uh, for participating in that, uh, Kristen. Uh, does he have a payment preference? Uh, cashier check to Aardvark Anaheim Incorporated? Uh, yes, that would be my uh, preferred form of payment, which is going to lead into uh, if anybody else wants to uh, play the home version of our game, uh, here's, how, here's how it's done. Uh, does he accept PayPal? Uh, not from the U.S. because we're really only set up for uh, Canadian dollar um, uh, payments at uh, uh, the PayPal on uh, CerebusDownloads.com and uh, my agreement with Gerhard is that he gets 25% of everything that, uh, that comes in on CerebusDownloads.com and so I prefer not to have um, one thousand dollar commissions with two hundred and fifty dollars going going to Gerard when uh, when he didn't do anything on it. I don't think Gerard would expect that. Uh, card? No, no credit cards. Uh, we covered that fees, one. Fees, yeah, the fees were just getting out of hand, and uh, I suspended Art Park Anaheim's Visa and MasterCard accounts and have never had cause to regret it over the years. And also, it uh, it doesn't say it direct, but is he asking for $2,000 for the art cover? Uh, it's beautiful, but I do want to be on the same page. If you wouldn't mind assisting on this, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Kristen. And yes, thank you, Matt. Uh, hello, Kristen. Rolly mailed you the service, the sketchbook. So for the moment, let's leave it at that. Wait until the sketchbook comes in. Uh, and then when it comes, or it might be an if, you know, if it comes in, this, uh, this, this whole thing seemed really, really smooth and beneficial. Uh, with absolutely no downside, and that always gets me suspicious, because 
it means okay. I, I'm getting I'm getting set up for a custard pie in the face here, but what the heck? I'll 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 play along. And this is the potential custard pie I see in this one is uh, Kristen pays me for the cover, and then uh, the cover never actually never uh, gets to it. So uh, if Kristen can keep us posted on that, uh, it w- there was. Um, but yeah, you know, wait until you actually see. Uh, I would be very happy with uh, with two thousand uh, dollars. The, ori- the original is um, very different from a scan of the original. If uh, if you see it and it's that much better than you thought it was going to be, yes, I'd be I'd be tickled to death with uh, with two thousand dollars. But uh, I'll leave that up to you. You said like a uh, thousand. Or more than a thousand, so that's why I was again leaving that up to you because this was a complete um, serendipity uh, kind of situation. Of uh, it, it really couldn't have come together, uh, and I'll explain this in a moment. Uh, couldn't couldn't have come together in uh, a more a more unlikely unlikely or uh, serendipitous kind of way. It seemed like a a comic art uh, metaphysics kind of thing um, because it was uh, first of all um, your letter was the only piece of mail that came in that week that wasn't uh, a bill or just you know a request from a charity or something like that that uh, I had to deal with on that level and it came in the day after I finished the, uh, the painted Turtles 8 cover, where I probably learned more about watercolor painting um, than I have learned from the watercolors that I've done over the last 30, 40 years. And going, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting. I had no idea that there was that much obvious stuff that I didn't know about watercolors and that I, I now do know about watercolors. So it seemed resonant with, uh, I think I've told you the story before about uh, Bill Sienkiewicz making the decision that he wanted to make his sketchbooks look more like his finished art and his finished art look more like his sketchbooks. And uh, when I got the Turtles cover done, it was, it was, it, it had been a salvage job from about <laughs> the middle out. Um, I got it halfway done and went, okay, um, I really have no idea if this can be saved or if I know how to save it, but uh, I, I'm just gonna leave this hanging on the wall and look on it, and look at it uh, reasonably frequently until I'm pretty confident that uh, I'm ready to tackle it again, and uh, I actually did did save it. It's like that that almost never happens. Usually, you you try to save something, and it's like, well, it doesn't. The best I can hope for is it doesn't suck as badly as it did at the halfway point, but it still sucks. It's like, mm, no, it it actually didn't didn't suck when I was done, and uh, what was. One of the interesting things was because I was learning more about watercolors than I had ever learned before uh, over the last 30 years, the, uh, the test sheet that I had, which is the same uh, for testing the watercolors, um, same size, 11 by 17, as, uh, as the cover itself, uh, I, looked, I looked at it and it, and it had that, that Bill Sienkiewicz quality where I'm going, uh, I want to make my watercolors look more like my test sheet, and my test sheet uh, look more like uh, like my finished painting. Uh, I was looking at the patches where I was uh, mixing the the color of the clouds and figuring out how to do the clouds, and going, this looks so much better on the test sheet than it does. And I. Uh, Note, note to Margaret, I will be, I will be signing the test sheet 
and sending it to you. So you can scan it and uh, and, and vouch for my claim. Uh, I might even circle the area that I'm talking about. And it was, uh, yeah, if, if only the sky on the turtle's cover looked like the, uh, the area where I was mixing the gray and the blue, uh, that'd be really cool. So it's like, well, okay, you did both. It's not, it's not as if somebody else did the test sheet. This is, this is your test sheet. You just weren't anguishing about the test sheet, but you were anguishing about the painting, which is probably where your, where your problem is coming from. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't anguish about it. Just uh, put the clouds on just as if you were, you were testing the color on a test sheet uh, instead of going, okay, here we go. Everybody tense up. We're getting ready to do the clouds. So that had all come to the end um, the day before. Uh, I get, I get when Rolly picks up the mail, so I get the mail on Thursday, uh, unless he's downtown doing errands for somebody else. Uh, in which case, he'll drop off uh, the mail on Wednesday. Uh, but he, he, he draw, uh, he got me the mail. And it's like, I opened the letter and it's like, um, it's got a, my comic shop copy of the sketchbook or cover, um, in a, in a plastic bag with a backing board. And it's, uh, you know, if I paid you a thousand dollars, would you be interested in doing something on this? And, uh, do you have, you know, kind of a counter offer? Uh, you, know, you saw the, the, the thing that he sent. So it's like I'm looking at it. It's uh, Rolly gets here about uh, between 10 to 9 and, and quarter after 9, depending on what's going on on Thursday morning. So it's, uh, it's quarter after 9, and I'm going, okay, my, my brain is still swirling with all of this watercolor um, information, knowledge that I've developed, theory, um, be like this, don't be the way that you've been for the last 30 years with watercolors. Uh, here I've got somebody willing to pay me at least a thousand dollars for something on his sketchbook cover. I know that watercolors can be done on the sketchbook cover. Uh, and all of my watercolors are still sitting up. I, I, I haven't put them away because I just did it last night. So what can I do uh, between now and when Rolly is leaving, which is uh, usually a uh, little afternoon, uh, depending on how much time he spends over at Studio Comic Express uh, going over stuff with Alfonso. Uh, can, can I, in effect, get a service watercolor done in an hour or an hour and a half and still have the rest of the day to work on Strange Death of Alex Raymond and confirm for myself, yes, this is the way you want to do watercolors. You don't want to do them the way that you've been doing them. And it was an interesting 10 or so minutes of going, well, if you're going to do it, you have to, you have to start doing it now. You can't sit in think about this, or the longer you think about it, the more uh, implausible, unlikely, unworkable it's going to turn out to be. So I went, okay, rip open the plastic bag, take out the sketchbook, put it on the drawing board, and uh, do, a, do a quick Cerebus uh, pencil sketch uh, of Cerebus, and then just went down the checklist while I was doing it. Um, here's Here's what you want to do, and here's the order that you want to do them in, in order to do a much better watercolor. And uh, I, I won't go down the checklist because it's it's fairly expensive and it's it's pretty esoteric. But uh, sure enough, uh, an hour and a half, um, hour and forty five minutes later, I had it done. Uh, it was serendipitous as well as well because. I was uh, experiencing severe money para paranoia, which happens when I haven't gotten money in on anything for a while. And 
uh, I'm still I'm still paying bills, but uh, the money's all going out. Money isn't coming in. Uh, baby boomers, particularly, are completely phobic about that. And, uh, uh, now something has to be done about this, and it's like, well, okay, that's going to relieve some of that stress as well. If you can say, whatever else happened today, I made at least a thousand dollars U.S. in an hour and a half. Uh, the more of that that we can have around here, the happier a camper grandpa is going to be. Which uh, leads me to uh, the circuit, circuitous, circuitous route that I've been following to try and lead to the point. If anybody else wants to do that, if anybody else wants to send me uh, a check or a money order made out to Aardvark Vanaheim, uh, doesn't have to be a sketchbook. I've still got some sketchbooks here. If you want it to be on a sketchbook, or if you just want it that size, basically comic book cover size, and just go, uh, I want the next one of these that that you have available. And uh, I'm not going to say it has to be a thousand dollars. I would say, but I would say the fact that Kristen said. Uh, I was going to put a money order for $1,000 in the air, but then I decided I didn't want to be that presumptuous about it. Uh, it his instincts were good. He, he probably should have just put the money order in there um, so that we didn't have to, have to talk about the rest of that. So anybody listening to this who goes, yeah, I would, uh, I would like that. I would like to send Dave uh, something in the vicinity of a thousand dollars U.S., knowing that um, when I when I send that on, let's say a Wednesday, he's going to get it the following Thursday. He will do it when he gets it in because it'll be a Thursday, so he can start at nine o'clock in the morning working on it. He'll get it done. Rolly will wrap it up and mail it, and theoretically, and pretty solid theory. Uh, two weeks later, you will have your finished Dave Sim Cerebus watercolor. Okay, I will. I will talk that one up to everybody. Of uh, hey, you can get this, but you you know, and and it's it's a cash and a barrel head deal. You know, there isn't going to be. We're not going to bicker. We're not going to haggle. It's if you send the money, you'll get it. If you don't send the money, guess what you're going to get. Nothing, nothing, and uh, it it would it would be proportional to whatever the money was. I have to say, Kristen, like I say, this was completely serendipitous because if you had just sent a letter saying, uh, "Are you interested in doing commission?" and that was it, then it would have been uh, not really because I I know you know then the next question is going to be. Uh, how much do you charge for a commission? And it's like, well, I don't really do commissions, so the more you offer, uh, you know, the, the more likely you would be able to attract my immediate attention. And I can say, you know, it's uh, in these inflation ravaged times, a thousand dollars U.S. is a thousand dollars U.S. and. Uh, if, if if you want to attract Dave Sims' attention, that, that's that's going to do it. So um, I, yeah, I I I leave it I leave it there as an offer. I don't know if this was just a one-time uh, comic art metaphysics. Uh, how many different things can you have stacked up in 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 one piece of art uh, coming into existence that had to happen in that exact sequence for it to happen? That's why I'm hoping that uh, it wasn't a, all of these things happened perfectly in uh, an immaculate sequence, and then uh, it got lost in the mail, so it's a, it's a custard pie in the face. Ha ha ha. At my, my friend Kelly is an artist, and year, like 20 years ago when I was hanging out with her, it was weird. I wanted to date her, she didn't want to date me, but I was, you know the nerdy guy that was just hanging around, hoping that she would, you know, randomly change her mind. And she's like, it's weird. And I'm like, what? And I'm thinking, oh, okay, she's finally, you know, going to 
see the light and like, oh yeah, this guy. It's like when you're around, it's like you're my muse, and I get more done. And I'm like, that's because we just sit around while you work and I goof around. I mean, it's it's you know, I'm not distracting you by hey, let's watch a movie. Hey, let's do this. It's a, you said you had to work. I'm just here to you know keep you awake while you're working. And she had a piece that she sold, mailed out, gone. Postal Service ate it. So she had a quick do a recreation of the piece, which she had copied, you know, she had scans of, so, you know, she knew the general layout of what it was, but, you know, it was slightly different because it's a recre, it's, it's not a line for line recreation, it's a, this was what that piece was, this is another version of it, and then she did a second piece as, as you know, just a quick sketchy type piece as a thank you, and mailed it out to the guy, and, like, um, six months later got, got, oh yeah, the, post office found this and delivered it to me so here's here's some extra money type thing so right. it, the post office does have a tendency to eat things so I mean I'm hoping I'm pulling for you Kristen I'm pulling for you but I, I you know I'm, I'm we're all gonna think good thoughts about that sketch cover getting to his hand yes and, and, and hopefully it's already there I mean it has been uh has been almost a week. The same thing happened with, I think it was Steve Swenson, um, where I did a Cerebus and Yoda um, uh, drunk on the town, and he wanted it in pencil, and the post office lost the first one, so I did a second one, and then, yes, it does tend to happen that the first one does show up, but it it shows up only when you've given up all possible hope of ever seeing it again, which is which is why I think both Canada Post and the U.S. Post Office have a rule that it's not considered lost until at least six weeks have gone by, and you have to have tracking for it that says, yes, we tracked it this far, and we have no idea where it went after that. I, I love tracking because Paula will order stuff off the internet and get the tracking number and she'll get updates of, okay, it's here, okay, it's there. And like, we order the kids school supplies and they're, you know, 50 miles away. Okay, you know, that makes sense. There's a hub 50 miles away. It's getting put on a truck. And then she got the message, they're in Chicago. And she's like, that, no, that's backwards. It doesn't come, it doesn't come close and then go far. Away. And it was... It was, yeah, no, this this particular package, which was, it'll be here tomorrow, was, nah, it'll be here at the end of the week. It's like, apparently somebody put it on the wrong truck or something. I mean, it, it, we're all human. Some people don't understand, you know, that, hey, this pallet is for this place, not that place. But at the same time, it's it's funny to watch, you know, because it's, it's like the, the uh, Norway cards that Dagan sent you that, you know, how do you send something right. from America through Norway? <laughs> To Canada. Well, it, it it does happen. We we know that it does happen. Every everybody gets a turn. Okay, I think uh, as, as wildly as improb improbable as it may seem, I think we brought that in at an hour and a half. The the last question I know that was on the list that might have gotten lost was, uh, I think Dan Eckert was the guy that asked. So with the reduced print run for the last day is there still going to be a Waverly Press edition or is that going by the wayside with with reduced print runs uh, I would say there's either going to be a Waverly Press edition or there will be something um, obsessive compulsive disorder matching the Waverly Press edition, so that it it looks like it belongs with uh, with the uh, with the other hardcovers. Uh, oh. uh, Alfonso has talked about uh, he's wanted to get into hardcovers for a while, so this is one of those. Um, I still haven't broken it to him that I I'm pretty sure he's going to be uh, printing everything. Uh, for us from now on, so uh, uh, it would it, it would certainly streamline things if um, Alfonso was able to do uh, Waverly Press hardcovers 
or Waverly Press because um, Fagan actually does a fair amount of business through Alfonso now and realizes that Alfonso knows what he's doing. So it's not as if, um, you know, suddenly telling Fagan, hey, guess what? Your Sarah's hardcovers are going to be done for Alfonso. He's not going to scream out loud and start pulling his hair out kind of thing. Well, so... Because the last day only technically had one printing, because it was all done, you know, at once, the, the signed edition and the unsigned edition, and that print run lasted for 15 years, do you guys know what that print run was? No. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm assuming the bill for it I, I, might be in the archive someplace. Yes, which is... One of those, uh, uh, pretty much everything is in the archives someplace, but that would be uh, backtracking over um, 18 years. I could, I could ask Roly about that because uh, Roly is the one who, uh, when, we, when I finally got to the point where I went, okay, uh, we need to get a little more organized on this in terms of this stuff doesn't have to be at Camp David because it's not uh, something that we're we're going to have to refer to, uh, and that's definitely in that category. Um, receipts from uh, 2004, 2005. Uh, so. That would that would probably be a couple of questions for Wally. Like, did did you prioritize putting this stuff in order over at the storage unit, which is the alternative place to uh, uh, put that material? Uh, so that if I said to you, "Can you get me honey um, print with those uh, receipts or uh, bills?" For, uh, for printing for 2005. Uh, they are, it's pretty organized from that standpoint that uh, all of the, all of the printing print litho bills in a box full of Art Bart Van bookkeeping for a given year uh, are in the same place. So it's like if you, if you dig through the pile and you find the, uh, printing print list of bills and pull them out, it'll be in there somewhere and it will have the quantity listed with it. But um, everything everything at Aardvark Mannheim has always been uh, hurry up offense stuff. It's like uh, we don't we don't have time for a huddle. <laughs> we're just every everybody, uh, here's what we're doing. Get on the line. We're gonna you know uh, we're going to run the play. Let, let's hope we get we get some yards out of this. Let's hope we get some major yards out of this. And that's the way I've lived uh, my whole business life from, <laughs> uh, from the 1970s on. Well, I just because if if like a uh, the minimum marquee order would be a thousand books, and a thousand copies of the last day would last probably another fifteen to twenty years. Does your storage have enough room for those copies if we were to like kickstart a this is what the bill is going to be for a thousand copies, you know, plus extra for shipping them all, you know, would it, would it make sense to try to, to do the pie in the sky, hey, let's, let's raise 20 grand to print a thousand copies or whatever the cost would be, or is it, or is the, you know, going through Alfonso just in the long run, going to be the smarter deal because it's going to make more sense of, okay, we only print 50, 60 extra copies, and when those are gone, those are gone, and then we'll think about printing again. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a gut instinct call. I think that's where we're going. Um, I think that's where uh, printing and publishing are going with a capital G as opposed to going with a lowercase g or going in quotation marks 
uh, we've always been going in that direction. Um, talking to Kim Prenny on the phone uh, a while back and saying, um, I really wish that you could see Alfonso's press uh, that he prints comic books on because, you know, uh, Kim knows the size of the presses that they had. The you know the Heidelberg Web Offset presses, and uh, it, it took up um, a, a a lot of space. You needed uh, industrial basin size area in order to uh, to accommodate it. Um, and Alfonso has it as part of his uh, his comic store operation. It's like it's a comic store in. Uh, basically a large strip mall and one of the smaller stores he's, he's moved into one of the larger ones but it's still uh, it's still not uh, you know Walmart sized or anything like that and it's like uh, the uh, the press uh, fits over in the corner um, the same thing that the uh, the pre-press that we used to do um, oh the name of Name of the place slips my mind, but uh, the first time that uh, they upscaled to an industrial basin location, it was, it had to be you know the size of a uh, uh, a Walmart or a superstore, and it was all just this is this is what we do here. We do uh, pre press printing, so this is the section where. Uh, you know, everything gets pasted up. Uh, this is, um, you know, where the negatives are shot. And then uh, over here is, you know, the shipping department, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when they finally went out of business and uh, we stuck with them right to the end of Cerebus, they were in a strip mall in a very small store location and still doing everything that they were already doing. But... Uh, the technology had gotten uh, had, had become microscopic compared to what it used to be. Uh, the guy that that used to own uh, the operation uh, was was one of the partners. That it was interesting because uh, he was uh, showing his girlfriend the operation and uh, uh, was showing her uh, pre-press material done physically and ours was the only one and that was the first time that it 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 dawned on him we're doing everything else on computer and uh when when service comes to an end that'll be it Every, everything is done on computer and when everything can be done on computer it doesn't have to be done at an office or in a store sized location uh, it's just inside your computer on your desk. So ultimately that's where publishing is going, where probably I will, you know, if I'm still doing this 20 years from now, I'll be printing the comic books uh, here at the Off White House. Just, uh, you know, slap, slap them into the, uh, into the unit and hit the start button and ka-chung, 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 here the, here the comic books come, uh, wrap them up and mail them. Oh, geez, that sounds like work. It's a, it, uh, Alfonso, you know, Alfonso is doing it now, but uh, that's just because he's right size for 2022. Uh, I would be completely astonished if uh, he was still the right size as a printer, uh, you know, come 2030 or 2035. That's... I know that uh, one of Paula's patients wrote a book because she's a veteran and she's publishing it through Amazon. So the deal is you go to Amazon, you buy the book and then they, you know, print one copy, package it up and mail it to you. Because, you know, it's Amazon. They, they can afford to do that kind of stuff. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, you know, 
do you want to do it that way? Like, you know, it, it's one of those, at that point, when you're sending them the file, you better be 100% sure that it's going to print the way you want it to print. And, you know, there's no typos and all that stuff because, you know, as soon as it's a, okay, I clicked the button, now I get a copy of the book, it's, it it just, it worries me as a, you know, if all your I's aren't dotted and all your T's aren't crossed, something's going to go wrong. And, and I'm pretty sure the margins for, you know, okay, you sold three copies of your book and, you know, at minus the shipping costs and the printing costs, here's your cut and you get like $5 as, as your royalty or whatever. It's like, you know, is this really a way that you, you want to try to run a business? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's any way that anyone wants to run a business, but want has very little to do with it when, uh, the technology juggernaut is, like I say, going this way, capital G going, not it might be going this way or it might not be going this way. No, it's it's going this way. It's always going to be going in the direction of um, uh, smaller and more self-contained. The same as, uh, you know, Hollywood spends a lot of money uh, on movies that are shot on giant cameras that aren't really necessary anymore in terms of being able to film something in high enough definition that when it's uh, you know enlarged up to the side size of a of IMAX or even you know a regular film screen uh, you can do that on your cell phone now it's uh, uh, that's where technology has capital G gone, you can you can fetishize the the giant seventy millimeter cameras and all of that kind of technology, which they do. But eventually, that's that's going to catch up with you. Um, you know, it's the same thing with uh, with Stephen King testifying uh, uh, about the the merger of uh, Penguin Random House and whatever else it was to two of the top five publishers. And, you know, this will uh, reduce competition and mean that, uh, you know, the, the authors that would ordinarily get a very large advance will get be getting smaller advance, advances because there's less competition in publishing. It's like, uh, I don't think people are really getting advances anymore. It's interesting that you're talking to Stephen King. Uh, when was the last time that Stephen King got an advance? And how much of an advance did he get uh, for his book? And how much did his book sell? It's like, uh, if you're talking about The Shining, then you're talking about one thing. If you're talking about uh, the last book that Stephen King wrote um, and how that did on Amazon, that's in a that's in a completely different category. Well, that's I, I I saw some of the highlights of it, and I'm just I'm going you know it's one of those I I I don't absorb the news the way I should I I get it all through osmosis and it's like I hear about oh yeah you know Random Penguin House and Simon and Schuster are gonna combine I'm going that's one of them real great ideas on paper, and then it's you know. You know, we're the, we're the number one publisher in the world. It's like, yeah, but how many books are you guys putting out? The same as you did when you were two separate companies? Or half as many, because now you're one giant company. And, right. I mean, any, any kid out there today dreaming of, I'm going to be the next Stephen King? No, nah, no, man. Like, like Stephen King's probably the last Stephen King. There's not going to be... You know, yeah. J.K. Rowling was the last Stephen King, I think. Um... And yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that, that it's, uh, the other thing is um, how, how, how many of your books as Simon and & Schuster and uh, uh, Penguin Random House, uh, let's, let's list uh, every book that uh, both of you published last year and how are they doing? Um, how many of those books, first of all, earned back their advance, and second of all, actually made money, and uh, third of all, uh, actually
actually made uh, an appreciable amount of money. Uh, that's something that they don't talk about a whole lot. That uh, whoever the I forget the name of the the authoress who uh, who wrote the book and wanted the uh, the cover of uh, Church and State Volume Two as part of her cover. I always uh, get her name wrong. Hand, you know, Give me half a second okay. to get to my. I always get her name wrong. Give me half a second to get to my night's thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, while you're doing that, um, I, I remember you know reading. Okay, this is a New York Times bestseller author, and then you know when uh, when it came time to say, okay, we're doing the paperback edition of the hardcover. And uh, you know we we would we would like to uh, pay for the rights to use uh, the Church and State two cover on uh, on the paperback, and uh, I forget what the sales numbers were, but they were definitely you know um, there were Cerebus trade paperbacks that sold more you know back in the day than uh, than this book sold. Uh, to become a New York Times bestseller. It was just, you know, 3,000 copies, 5,000 copies. Uh, it, it's it's really turning into a, a world's tallest midget kind of thing. Somebody with a Little Hammer by Mary Gateskill. And Thank you. I, I, have... was, I was going to wander over to my cupboard because I know exactly where it is under uh, uh, Cerebus the Cartoon Messiah and in with uh, uh, the, I believe, the Spanish hardcovers of, it, uh, of High Society. And that's the one. It that's was, the one that we're talking about. It was one of those, I had extra money in Amazon or something, and it was it was on my list of, okay, when I have a little extra money, I'm going to buy this book. When I Because every time we go to the bookstore, I'd be looking for a copy because I want to find it in the wild. And finally, I'm like, no, screw this. I'm just going to order it off Amazon and get the damn book now. And I right. got it, and I started reading. I'm like, yeah, this has nothing to do with an artwork other than she liked the character in high school, and that's why he's on the cover of the book. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, that, it, that too is fame. Where uh, what, whatever it is, and it was, it was really just that cover that uh, that 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 meant that to her. That she had put it. I think she had. Uh, wrapped a photocopy of it or something around her notebook that she she wrote in. Um, I, I read parts of parts of the book when I got it in. Uh, she was kind of interesting talking about Norman Mailer, uh, just in terms of the fact that um, most women don't read Norman Mailer, wouldn't read Norman Mailer, and certainly would have nothing favorable to say about Norman Mailer. And uh, she wasn't in any of those three categories. So there's always a, a certain kind of uh, admiration that I get for uh, for women that are that are willing to buck the. Uh, uh, this is what you're allowed to do as a feminist. Uh, this is you aren't allowed to do as a feminist because Nora Mailer is definitely in that category. No, we don't. We don't talk about Norman Mailer. We don't. Uh, and we certainly don't uh, treat him as uh, as somebody worthy of favorable comment. Well, but I, I don't re I don't read books because I don't I don't really have time uh, to read books. I'm just doing uh, doing Strange Death of Alex Raymond, and everything for me after that is uh, is pretty much newspapers these days. Which is uh, I'm not I'm not going to get internet access. And I'm not going to become an internet junkie, but it really is interesting what people are turning themselves into and don't realize that they're turning themselves into something unrecognizable of what they used to be. And I, I, I got to say, I really think that that's the internet. It's like... I don't think you could have been a journalist uh, 20, 25 years ago. You needed to have the internet come along and turn into this 
uh, litmus test of, of thinking the right way and um, somehow merging that with, uh, with what you think journalism is. So it's, you know, for me, again, coming from the 20th century and still being in the 20th century, it's, uh, uh, these people are plumb crazy, but it, it's worth, it's worth reading on a daily basis. Uh, you know, I read the National Post daily and, uh, you know, the Waterloo Region record Monday and Wednesday, the Toronto Sun Monday and Wednesday, uh, the Epoch Times Friday. Um, started picking up the International Express, the, uh, the London, England paper uh, on Wednesday, because uh, that's that's real traffic accident stuff. That's that's English journalism, which was already crazy uh, thirty years ago, and uh, now is has really turned into something quasi-human. Uh, now that it's merged with the internet and is and is trying to appeal to uh, to internet people. What? I, I was reading a, 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 the article the other day about uh, there are immune people that like uh, like Beyonce and uh, uh, Taylor Swift uh, and Harry Styles who have such a rabid fan base that they get good reviews on everything because you find out what happens to journalists who dare to give, you know, Beyonce two stars out of five. And it's like, oh man, you couldn't, you couldn't have made that up uh, 25 years ago. It would be, no, no, uh, human free will is a, is a much stronger thing than that. And it's like, no, it's not. We, I, uh, that's another one of those capital G going. Uh, Beyonce is taking us nowhere good. <laughs> and I can only afford to say that because we are so uh, micro small and of no interest uh, to those people that, uh, you know, we're not going to have, uh, what do they call it, doxing because Dave Sims said something unfavorable about Beyonce on, uh, on Please Hold for Dave Sims. Yeah. Note to Matt, don't put a hashtag Beyonce when we put this video up. Right, right. Let's, let's, let's not go looking for trouble because there is nothing but trouble over there. I, I have no idea where that level of capital I immunity from criticism is capital G going, but it's it's going nowhere good. Well, um, really bad when it merges with politics. I mean, uh, Justin Trudeau was completely, completely capital I immune to criticism and uh, still pretty much is in, in Canada. And it's like, boy, that's really, really unhealthy. That's... Uh, um, that's just asking, um, you know, a personality type like Justin Trudeau, hey, would you like to be the Chairman Mao of Canada? Hey, sounds like fun. Yes, I think I can decide for everybody what, what's the way Canada is going to go. And if you don't agree with that, well, hey, say goodbye to your career. That's... Okay, now now we're coming up on two hours. We're, we're, we're going to wrap this up. You got any... Last comments on that? Well, the, the 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 best thing that anyone can do is something my dad did to me when I was young, and you know, more more energy and muscle than brain, and working my first job, and was talk, you know, basically had the attitude about, you know, I walked on water and my crap didn't stink, and my dad's like, listen, you think you're irreplaceable? And I'm like, yeah, and that, they, there's no way they could replace me. And he's like, all right, go get a five gallon pail, and I'm like, what? He's get a five gallon pail. Fill it full of water. Put your hand in. Splash around. Have fun. Pull your hand out. If you don't leave a hole in the water, you're not irreplaceable. And it, right. it, that's the kind of lesson that you know, you know, 
up to a certain point, you can say, like, if I tried that with any of the kids I work with now, they'd be like, what? I don't get it. I'm like, I'm trying to tell you, you could be fired and replaced tomorrow. You think you can't, but you could. You know, and that's, that's, that, that's, you know, we got to stay humble of, okay, you know, I may not know everything, but I know what I know. And, and I could be wrong. That's, that's, that's the phrase that I think people say it and they don't really think it anymore is, you know, I could be wrong, but. Right. Right. Yes. I think that, um, one of the, one of the things that, uh, uh, the Epoch Times, uh, keeps talking about is, you know, how, uh, communism and, and the to totalitarian impulse have, uh, uh, invaded and basically taken over the academic world. I think it's very hard to, to argue against that. Um, my solution to that is, uh, only teach facts. Don't, don't teach opinions and don't teach anything that's in dispute uh, because what you want to do is teach facts up to a specific point and then teach critical thinking um, the way to uh, uh, craft an argument the way to uh, uh, refute something that you disagree with apart from you know ad, ad hominem attacks okay you know you don't like this guy but uh what about the, the ideas uh, that he's presenting? Um, you should really only in school be teaching um, the boiling point of water. Um, you know, uh, Newton's laws of motion, um, irrefutable facts. Um, you know, here, here's the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E. No, we're, we're not going to, you know, um, create a, uh, another alphabet that's, uh, you know, not as colonialist kind of thing. If you just stick to irrefutable facts, then you don't, you don't have to worry about that. Then it's, uh, okay, facts are over here and opinions are over there and never the twain shall meet is I think the only way to repair this, you know, gargantuan, blue state versus red state thing where everything degenerates into an argument with uh, both sides pointing at the other and going totalitarian. It's like, okay, there's nothing totalitarian about the boiling point of water. It boils at a specific temperature. Always has, always will. Let's just deal with that and forget about climate change. That's opinion stuff. Just that's that's external to education in terms of just teach facts and, uh, and stay, stay away from opinions. Okay, it's another, please hold for Dave Sim, in the can, Matthew. It is in the can. My, my, my recording app is, say, is turning red saying, okay, you're almost at the end of your recording. You go, what are you going to do? And I'm go, thinking, this is a perfect time to say, okay, good night, Dave. Good night, Matt. We'll see you next month. Same bad time, same bad channel. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so Dave's offer. $1,000 sketchbook cover. Or if you want to give more money, you get a better cover. It, it That's, you know, 10 bucks is 10 bucks is, is the best way to put this. You know, so... Everybody dig through the couch cushion and see what money you got left. I mean, I understand there's Kickstarters up the wazoo, and and you got to save up for the 44 different uh, Turtles covers. I mean, there can't possibly be that many, right? Right? Okay. Uh, last one, I'll turn out the lights, uh, and be good to each other, and whatever you do. Uh... Uh, this is the part where you're supposed to say like, share, and subscribe, but I don't care about that. So uh, after this, find some classical music and just, or, or old Bugs Bunny cartoons with classical music and, and get some culture. Okay. Good night, everybody.